About a year and a half ago, I reviewed the Glorious Model O, and it was an absolute shock to the gaming mouse industry. And if you told me then that Glorious would then make a wireless option in the next year with a decent battery life and no perceivable input lag, I would just straight up not believe you. But here it is, the Model O wireless, and the best part is it's only $80. So it's pretty simple. If you're due for a gaming mouse upgrade, this should definitely be at the top of your list. So let's take a look at what you need to know. Now before we jump into the wireless functionality, battery life and how this compares to some of the more premium wireless options, let's get to probably the most important factor here and that's the overall shape and size of this mouse. This is going to be a critical factor of whether you actually adopt the Model O wireless as your new main or not and the good news is that it's an incredibly safe and mainstream shape. There is no one size fits all gaming mouse out there seeing as we all have different hand sizes and grip preferences but I'd say the Model O is pretty close to that. Compared to the G Pro Wireless and Viper Ultimate, I'd say all three of these mice are what I'd consider medium sized with a mainstream shape. Also, an interesting note is that the Viper Ultimate and Model O Wireless are almost an identical shape and they surprisingly feel that way too in the hand. That means if you were planning on buying the Viper Ultimate, scratch that and definitely get the Model O Wireless instead. It's a bit lighter and the buttons actually feel a bit better in my opinion as well. My hands are 19 and a half cent centimeters in length and 10 and a half centimeters wide and I can use the Model O wireless with a claw grip and fingertip grip but for palm grip I find it a bit small. Now for claw grip I will say that I find the Model O a little bit less than ideal. The rear section of the mouse just tapers off way too early and that means that if you're someone who prefers to have that area as a point of contact you might prefer something like the G Pro wireless or just another completely different mouse for that style of grip. And apart from the missing cord it's basically a Model O with a different sensor. That means build quality is excellent despite using a honeycomb shell and all of the buttons still feel great including the scroll wheel. And as far as I can see, there won't be any glossy models available. Your only two options here are matte black and matte white. And that's totally fine with me because the coating here is pretty solid. The weight comes in at 69 grams, which does undercut the Viper Ultimate by around five grams and the G Pro Wireless by around 10 grams. And I can definitely feel that lighter weight versus the 80 gram G Pro Wireless. But to me, this and the Viper Ultimate basically feel the same. Of course though, the big topic of discussion here is wireless and that new glorious BAMF sensor. Here there's only good news. The sensor feels as good as the top of the line sensors on the market. There's no noticeable latency and basically in terms of real world sensor performance there's nothing negative to say. Now in terms of battery life, Glorious are claiming up to 71 hours with this thing with the RGB lighting disabled which is quite competitive compared to some of the more premium options like the G Pro Wireless. Now I haven't played with this long enough to properly validate that but what I can say is that I've had it on my desk for around two days. The battery level has gone from four out of the five bars down to two, but that's also with the RGB lighting set to 60%. The lighting is nice and all, but you don't want to be inconvenienced mid game by having to plug this in. By the way, the USB connection is type C and that's something that is missing on both the Viper Ultimate and the G Pro Wireless. Now, as I mentioned previously, I find this mouse a bit hard to use with claw grip, seeing as there's very little volume at the rear of the mouse. So it was a big change from the Viper Mini which I've used as my main for around six months. Sometimes I would hit those headshots and be right on target. Other times I felt like I had no aim or control whatsoever and I'd get absolutely destroyed. This is why mouse shape and size is so important in relation to your own grip preferences and hand size. Realistically, I probably could adapt to this grip and size if I used it for long enough, but it is quite a bit different from what I'm currently using and my gameplay definitely reflects that. My recommendation is to consider what you're using now and whether you think the Model O would be a suitable fit. On the other hand, if you're not a sweaty tryhard when it comes to competitive first person shooters like myself, then you'll probably find this mouse just fine. I'll also quickly note that I've been using one of the new Glorious mouse pads, specifically the Fire Pad. This one has a medium to fast glide with some decent control and stopping power. I personally think that's perfect when paired with a nice lightweight mouse. They've also released the Ice Pad, which is a super fast pad that I found I had absolutely no control with 
and a similar experience with the new air pad which is quite thin so if you are after a new mouse pad definitely consider these and i think the fire pad will be best suited for most users it also stays extremely clean and doesn't really seem to pick up as much skin and dust as my previous logitech g640 so the glorious model o wireless it's an excellent mouse i mean how can it be for the specs here for the price $80 for what you're getting here is insanely good value. But I think this launch by Glorious is much bigger than just this new mouse. This new sensor and all the systems that they've built around it are going to be a serious challenge to companies like SteelSeries, Logitech, and Razer. Uh, just think about how much easier it's going to be to take this sensor and put it into all of these different shapes And as we know that is something that glorious is definitely prepared to do Some of my favorite shaped mice of all time are the Zowie s2 and xm1 And that's a shape that I'd love to see glorious tackle along with this awesome new wireless sensor for now though The model o wireless is seriously epic value for $80 You are easily getting a mouse that can take down the viper ultimate and also compete with the g pro wireless would I consider this the best gaming mouse on the market? Well, in terms of specs and price, definitely. But if you're looking for the best of the best and prepared to spend around twice as much, also consider the new G Pro Wireless Super Light, which comes in at 60 grams, doesn't use a honeycomb shell, and I'm hoping to review that one soon. So if you are looking for a gaming mouse upgrade, definitely consider the Model O Wireless. It's an overwhelming recommendation, and I will have it linked down below as well as some other options. As always, a huge thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.